A guy walks into a guitar repair shop. No, not a joke, real story. He was a young guy, and he picked up a certain guitar. And the sound of that guitar was so resonant, so beautiful, that it stuck with him always. And it set him on a trajectory to make guitars that sounded as beautiful as that one. Saranac Lake's Guitar Maker, on today's Story of the Day. Support for Story of the Day comes from Long Run Wealth, an SEC-registered investment advisor in Lake Placid, providing comprehensive wealth management, retirement, and financial planning solutions. LongRunWealth.com. Hey, I'm David Summerstein. It's Wednesday, December 6th. First up, there's not a lot of data about health care for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and queer community in the North Country. A Lake Placid-based graduate student wants to change that. Champlain Valley reporter Kara Chapman has more. Danny Baker grew up in Lake Placid. He graduated in 1999 and spent about 20 years working in healthcare in the D.C. area. He moved back to the North Country with his husband a couple years ago. And coming back has been a breath of fresh air. Um, Things have uh, changed for the better in terms of um, acceptance, I think, throughout the country, but also specifically in the North Country where I grew up. But Baker says even though there's more acceptance for LGBTQ folks, he and his husband still had a hard time finding LGBTQ-friendly health care here. And that's a struggle others face, too. He says there are a couple reasons for that. For one, rural areas like the North Country have lower access to health care in general. But also, some places and people here are just less accepting of LGBTQ people. Community stigma and experiences with community stigma can contribute to a a sense of lack of uh, LGBT-affirming care. Baker wants to help change that. He's a nurse practitioner and a Johns Hopkins University grad student. He's leading a research project that has two parts. The first part is a survey that's open to adults who live in Clinton, Essex, Franklin, Hamilton, Jefferson, Lewis, and St. Lawrence counties. Its goal is to take a look at the resources available to LGBTQ folks in the North Country and identify the barriers they face to getting the health care they need. Baker says these people have historically been excluded from both health care environments and health care research. It's our responsibility as healthcare providers and as public health professionals to um, look for inequities and address them. And we won't know about inequities and health disparities unless we look for them. Kelly Metzger is with the Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance. She says LGBTQ plus folks have specific needs. Providers willing to prescribe HIV prevention medication, higher level behavioral health professionals who can sign off on gender affirming surgeries, and at a more basic level, doctors willing to listen to their patients when it comes to their gender identities. We need these services as any other, as we would need uh, high blood pressure, as we need cardiac, as we need anything else. We need these services on top of that. She says those services need to be closer to where people live, not hours away in places like Burlington and Albany. Metzger says that's why it's important for people to take Baker's survey. We need to know where people are. We need to know the type of health care they need. And we need to find uh, those providers who can provide it in the communities in which we live. Andrea Whitmarsh is with the Essex County Health Department. She says getting specific data about the region's LGBTQ population is a big reason her agency is a partner on Baker's project. Any way that we can kind of gather that information and then help to share it and put it back out there, not only for those folks, but for the providers that may be interacting with them, you know, that's something that we've just really found a lot of value in. The second component of Baker's project centers on those healthcare providers. Baker says there's a community advisory board that's focused on promoting LGBTQ health in the region. But he's also working to launch a program called Project Echo. Baker says the idea behind Project Echo is to enhance rural health. It'll bring local experts and providers together to discuss different topics related to LGBTQ health care. And providers can actually present cases that they experienced in their care and um, solicit input on how other providers in the area would approach that, um, that patient circumstance, for example. The healthcare survey is open until December 31st. Baker says it's completely anonymous and the information will only be shared with Johns Hopkins University and North Country Health Departments. Kara Chapman, North Country Public Radio. Making musical instruments takes hours of precise and delicate work. It's a real craft. Today, we hear from one of those craftsmen, an acoustic guitar maker based in Saranac Lake. He's also one of the artists featured in the Art of Craft, 
an exhibit that opens this Friday at the View Art Center in Old Forge. Anna Williams Bergen has this North Country at Work story. Bruce Thompson started playing guitar when he was four and a half. His dad was learning to play, and he grew up near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, when there was a lot going on in the folk music scene. By the time I was finishing high school, I'd gotten pretty good uh, as a folk singer, folk picker, uh, and I was looking for a better guitar. Thompson fell in love in a repair shop outside Philadelphia. It was a Hermann Hauser, an antique German guitar that was in for some work. Thompson said its music made the walls shake, and he knew he had to have it. And I said, well, how much? And he said, $2,600. In 1971, $2,600 bought you a new car. And I said, I will never be able to afford a guitar like this. Thompson's friend gave him a book on building guitars. If he couldn't afford that guitar, maybe he could make one himself. But he didn't know anything about woodworking, and it seemed really complicated. Thompson didn't start until a few years later, when a guitar builder gave him some perspective. All instrument making happens one step at a time. And if you look at each step, it's maybe not that impossible. But you have to have the patience to just keep plugging away. So Thompson started building basic guitars. They weren't very good. One of them sold for a hundred bucks uh, five years later. One of them made very nice kindling to start a beach bonfire. Um, but that got me started. Now, Thompson has been building guitars for exactly 50 years. He did it as a hobby while he worked as a doctor. Since 2011, he's been able to spend more time building guitars and even turn it into a part-time business. Okay, uh, these are guitar clamps. These are what are called deep-throated clamps. Thompson's studio is technically a garage, but it's full of fancy wood that needs to be in perfect condition, not warped or dried out. I have uh, an air conditioner and I have both a humidifier and a dehumidifier that I switch off when the seasons change. And I try and keep the humidity in this shop at around 35% and the temperature around 70 to 72 degrees. Metal tools and clamps hang from the walls. There are shelves of wooden boards and a bunch of workbenches. One is raised up high for detail work like gluing and sanding. Here's some thousand grit, and we put that on there, and then we work in little. Thompson sands everything by hand. It's just one out of tons of steps that are all done with super careful attention to detail. So making a single guitar takes a long time. 80 to 100 hours per instrument. Um, I'm told that that's much too long, that I'm much too slow. I believe it. Thompson works with wood from all over the world. He explains that different kinds are better for different parts of the guitar. So we've got planks of uh, wood from Brazil here, from the Pacific Northwest, um, some maple from Pennsylvania. The wood itself is amazing stuff. Uh, I get to work with woods that have amazing color and texture and smell, that have connections all over the world. And, uh, And out of the skeletons, if you will, of, of living things, I'm able to put together something that produces amazing sound, brings people together. Plus, Thompson said there's always the challenge of trying to make the next one just a little bit better than the last. Great. So a little is. rough for not yeah. having warmed up. <laughs> for North Country Public Radio's North Country at Work project, I'm Anna Williams Bergen in Saranac Lake. You can see Bruce Thompson's guitars at the View Art Center in Old Forge. Their exhibit, The Art of Craft, featuring the work of craftspeople from across the Adirondacks, opens this Friday, December 8th. We have more news all the time on our website, ncpr.org. Music today by Oscar Sarmiento of Potsdam and Evan Veenstra of Gananoque, Ontario. I'm David Summerstein, North Country Public Radio.